and be glad in it today. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we worship you. We magnify your name. We thank you for your presence today. God, you're so good. You're so faithful. We honor and glorify you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We magnify you. We thank you for your presence today, God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for each and every person that's here today, Lord, that you minister to the hearts of the people. Lord, that each and every person leaves here strengthened and encouraged because of your presence, Father. We magnify, we honor you, we glorify you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Always sing how great. Yeah. 
your spirit lives, you are my victory. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, oh, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. One more time. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Hallelujah. I am not alone. He is my comfort. My comfort always holds me close. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. I am not alone. He is. So, so good 
you to sing it as you talking to the Lord. God, all my life, you've been faithful. And I'm so thankful when we sing this song, I think about the times in my life where I haven't been so faithful to God. But his unconditional love for me and his faithfulness, you know, even when we messed up and made mistakes, aren't you so thankful for his goodness. You know, I think, where would I be without the Lord? And you know, things may not be perfect in your life right now. There may be things that aren't going the way that you would hope. Maybe on your job or with your family, in a relationship with your kids, with whatever it is. But one thing that never changes is his love and his faithfulness. And when you praise and magnify and worship him, that creates an atmosphere for God to be able to move in your life and in your circumstances. And sometimes when you're going through something, when you're going through the storm, you need to pick up your chin and remind yourself, God, you have been faithful. I'm still breathing today because of your faithfulness. I'm still here because of your faithfulness. And just like the other times in my life, when you've been there for me and you brought me out, it's no different because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did it then, he will do it again because he is so faithful. And so you can have hope and encouragement today knowing, man, he's faithful. 
That's for somebody today. The enemy's lying to your mind saying it'll never change. It's always going to be this way. Uh Uh-uh, it's a lie from the pit of hell. My God is faithful, and you need to pick up your chin and remind yourself, all my life, God, you have been faithful. Hallelujah. And let that encourage you today. He's faithful. And you don't have to stay where you're at right now. Your future is bright. And if you'll let him lead, guide, and direct you, he'll get you to that place. Hallelujah. Because he's faithful. So let's sing it again. And I want you just don't worry about who's beside you, who's here, who's not here. I want you to sing it to him. And I want you to praise him and magnify him for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we have something to be thankful for. We have something to praise him for today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, come on, sing it to him today. right now. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, 
Lord, we just thank you for your presence, your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, stay in an attitude of worship. Let the Lord minister right now. Hallelujah. There's a stirring going on on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call forth those plans, those purposes, God, that you have for them. Things that are in her heart make a way. Oh, thank you for it, God. Thank you for it, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it, God. Come on, just stay in an attitude of worship. Let's just see what the Holy Spirit wants to do today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you, Lord. We magnify your name. We magnify your name, Lord. We glorify your name. We glorify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You know, you can be healed right now in his presence. You can receive healing right now in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. The, the anointing of God is here. He's ministering to somebody. Just receive it. We don't have to be in a rush. Just let him minister to you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we worship you. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Is there, is there somebody that's in pain right now? Anybody in pain right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Where is it? Hallelujah. Just stay in an attitude of worship. Hallelujah. You know, when Paul and Silas, they were in their midnight hour, their praise affected the other people in there with them. Your praise, your worship helps create an atmosphere for God to minister. Hallelujah. And we don't need to get in a rush. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what we need. And he knew that you would be here today and that there would be an atmosphere of his presence to minister to you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for the healing power of God to minister life. Healing and strength. Lord, you know what's going on. And Father, we thank you that from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, the anointing of God is flowing through her, working in every bone, every vertebrae, every muscle, every tendon, every nerve, every socket, every joint. you're the healer. Jesus, you went about healing and doing good 
You were moved with compassion and you healed. Father, I thank you for your healing power. because of us, God. It's all about you. It's because of the blood of Jesus. If there's anyone here right now that you have sickness or pain in your body, I want you to lift your hands toward heaven and say, Father, I receive of your healing touch right now. Because the healing power of God is present to heal. But you have to take it. You have to receive it. It's available to you right now, so just receive. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that backs are being healed. Stomach issues are being healed. Hallelujah. Joint problems. You have to go. Glory to God. Come on, the healing power of God is here. Receive. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we thank you for your precious blood right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for touching her. Oh, Father. That when you hung Jesus on the cross and his blood was spilled for her, Jesus had her on, on his mind. And so, Father, I thank you for strengthening and bringing encouragement and a joy. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for it. Oh, glory to God. Just stay in an attitude of worship right now. Hallelujah. Where's, where's Paul? Oh, no. oh, come back there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, keep, keep worshiping. Stay in that atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Magnify you. Thank you, God, for your healing power flowing. Right now, just receive. It's available to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I declare her heart is strong. Strengthened right now. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're the healer. You're the healer. Heart be strengthened. Every valve, every artery, whatever, every muscle. Thank you, Jesus. A strengthening. Just a refreshing. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Just raise your hands and thank God for his healing power. Oh, Father, your faithfulness. Your faithfulness, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my life, you have been thank you, Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Well, God bless you. You may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you just love the Lord and his presence? Hallelujah. He's so good, so faithful. And you know, I love when the Holy Spirit moves like that because you don't plan it. You know, he just, he knows what people need. Praise God. I'm so, so thankful for the Holy Spirit, even when we're social distancing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Well, welcome this morning to Midwest Believers Church. We are thrilled to have you here. I uh, just want to say, first of all, happy Father's Day to all of you dads. Could the dads stand up today? We want to give you a warm round of applause. All you dads stand up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Praise God. You are loved. You're appreciated. We hope you know that. I'm thankful for 
my husband, who is an awesome dad to our kiddos. He's a blessing. Praise God. Appreciate you. <laughs> Praise God. God's good. Amen. Amen. Um, just a couple quick announcements we want to go over. Don't forget, we are having two services on Sundays now, 8.30 and 10.30, trying to do that so um, we can social distance properly. And some people actually like coming to an early service, then they have the rest of their day free. And so, um, but we are in need of some volunteers for that. So if you would be willing to help one service a month with the early service as far as greeting, ushering, that kind of thing, we could use some extra helpers. We have a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center, and you can sign up for that. And uh, come check it out sometime on a Sunday morning at 8.30. And then also, don't forget, we are doing Testimony Tuesday. We do that on Facebook Live at noon on Tuesdays. And we need you to send us your testimonies. If something good is going on in your life, we want to hear about it so that we can share it because it is a boost to people in their faith. And so we're hearing good feedback from that, even from people that don't go to church here. They enjoy watching it because it's encouraging them. And so let us know uh, when something's going on that's good in your life so that we can share it. Amen. And then also, we have a free table out there. We'll have it for another week or two, but it's got some T-shirts, CDs, uh, food on it, and so please help yourself to that. We'd like to get that cleared out of here. And then also, um, we wanted to take a minute to invite our church family to come and help us celebrate Addie next week. Uh, she graduated from high school, and we are having an open house next Sunday here at the church from 1 to 3, and we want to invite our church family. And so if you're free and can st stop by after lunch or whatever, we'll be here from 1 to 3, and we're going to have just desserts and sweet treats, stuff like that. And so come and celebrate with us. It's been kind of a crazy graduation year but I am determined we are celebrating. <laughs> so come and celebrate with us, but we wanted to invite uh, our church family for that. And I think that's it. Am I missing anything else? I think that's it. Come on up. You ready for the word today? Yeah. Amen. Oh, I wanted to say, too, you can still come. Okay. But um, <laughs> hello to the Bryans. They're here from Kansas City. And so we appreciate them. They went here to church for years and then moved away on us. <laughs> I'm not pouting or anything, but you're always welcome to come back. You know, the yeah. door's always open, but we're thrilled to have you guys here. It's good yes. to see you boys. You're all grown up, and but we're thrilled to have you here today. Amen. Praise God. Okay. God is good. Amen? Amen? Sorry, I'm adjusting. Hallelujah. God is so good. So two things I thought of while she was talking. You know, that's how we work a lot, is she'll say something, and it sparks something in me. When she was talking about the early service and helping out, uh, there, is, there are some openings and things like that, but, you know, it's an opportunity. It really is an opportunity to serve the Lord and to serve one another, to serve your church family. And so, and there is a blessing on that when we serve, Amen. you know. And so, you know, so jump in there and figure out, you know, I used to roll over about 8.30 on Sunday morning, but now I'm rolling over about 6.30 and heading for the church. And so <clears throat> for the 8.30 service, it's such a blessing. And so uh, if you have it on your heart, you want to serve, then sign up out there and let's, let's get it. Amen. Praise God. And so, you know, these two services, they are uh, enabling us to reach more people. And we had been talking about going to two services. We've talked about it amongst ourselves for probably, well, ever since we've been in this building at least, we thought about, well, what are we going to do when we need to go to two services? Well, this is this kind of forced the issue. Uh, all of a sudden, we are in two services. And so um, we had thought about it, prayed about it, talked about, about it to our leadership team and uh, different ones. And, and uh, so it's a blessing. So if you have it on your heart to do, do it. Amen. It, there is a huge blessing for that. Uh, what was the other thing that I was going to talk about? You don't know because it was up here. But anyway, it'll come to me in just a little bit. Praise God. Somebody say, the Lord is good. Lord is good. So you know, a couple weeks ago, we started talking about who we are in Christ. Remember the badge that hello, my name is. And, um, but it is really important. 
for us to know who we are in Christ. Because, you know, we're going to respond differently. We're going to react differently to situations, maybe to people, because of who we are in Christ. Amen. In Him. In Him, we have victory. In Him is where our joy comes from. In Him is where our peace comes from. In Him is where our life comes from. It doesn't necessarily come from just our circumstances. And thank God for good circumstances, but that is not where our joy comes from because circumstances might go up and circumstances might go down. And, you know, they'll circum in other words, circumstances will change. But God's Word never changes. Amen. He's always faithful. And he's always good. Amen. Somebody say he's always good. He's always good. Amen. Let's just get that out of the way this morning. Say he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Amen. Say not bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. He's good. He's good. And so turn with me to John chapter 10. We're going to talk about this for just a few minutes. And this is uh, one of my favorite scriptures. And I talk about it quite a bit. And we've talked about it over the last few weeks. But uh, let's just dig into this just a little bit more this morning. John chapter 10, verse 10. Uh, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes. What, now, who was talking there? Anybody know who was talking there? Jesus, right? And he was talking, and he was talking about someone else. He wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about someone else. And who was that he was talking about? He was talking about the thief. The thief comes. The reason he comes. Now, uh, uh, we'll just use this in, as an example. If Troy, if I say, now, if Troy's not a thief, but if I say the thief comes, and I'm talking about him, am I talking about me? If I say he comes for one reason, and, you know, Troy, Troy's a real blessing, except when you go fishing with Troy. Because when you go fishing with Troy, you watch Troy catch fish. And everybody else is like, what is going on? It's the fish favor. It's fish favor. It's got to be the favor of fish. And anyway, we went fishing the other day, and we were just watching Troy just pull him in. All of a sudden, his pole would go over, and he was like pulling in these big slabs and uh, these big fish and all this stuff. And we're like, uh, whatever. And Jim, Troy's father-in-law, says, don't worry, guys. He goes, I'm using the exact same stuff. I'm fishing in the same place, doing what he's doing. He's catching all the fish. And I think Jim was a little upset at that point, right? <laughs> I think we all were. Dan and I were like, hey, let's go ahead and leave. And so we left. But anyway, um, the thing about that, if I'm talking about Troy, I am not talking about me. And many times, things go wrong in people's lives. And God gets the credit for it. And he's not the one who did it. Amen. And this scripture right here, there is a line of demarcation between what Jesus was there for and what the enemy comes for. Don't ever find yourself on, on this side pointing your finger at God. Amen. You know, if something's not going, if circumstances aren't going right, you know where we should be? Lord, you're faithful. We should be on this side. Lord, I, I, I don't know about all this other stuff, but you are faithful. And you are always good. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Somebody say God's good. Amen. I didn't mean to throw you under the bus, Troy. But, but he does have fish favor on him. So, amen. Later on, guys, we'll do a line for fish favor. No, I'm just kidding. That's not really scriptural. <clears throat> But John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. And I came that they might have and enjoy life, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Why did Jesus come? He came that you might have and enjoy life. Jesus knew why he came. He came that we might have and enjoy life. Why did Jesus come? The Father sent the Son. I'm so glad. And how do we know what's in the Father? Well, you never know what God's going to do. You never know what God's going to do. Yes, we know what God's going to do. What God's going to do. You never know what God will do. No, we do know. 
we know that he's faithful. We know that he's good. We know that he loves us. Amen. We know these things. We know that we can stand before him without fear, without inferiority. We can stand before him knowing that there's nothing between us and God because of Jesus. And why did Jesus come? Because God sent him. Whose idea was it that Jesus would come? It was God the Father's idea. You know why? He wanted a relationship with us. And so he sent his son. There's only one way to make this happen. Jesus, I'm sending you down there. And you're going to shed your blood. And you are going to uh, cross, uh, cross that great divide. Amen. And you'll be the bridge from humanity to an almighty God. From sin to born again. From sin to blotted out. Hallelujah. You would be the one. And Jesus came just for that reason. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that when we see Jesus, Jesus actually said this to the disciples. They said, uh, Jesus, show us the Father. And he looked at them and he said, have you been with me this long and you don't know who the Father is? He said, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. In other words, and Jesus said this, I only do what my Father tells me to do. I only say what my Father tells me to say. We're talking about the difference between, uh, between why Jesus is here and why the enemy has come. And Jesus said this, he made this statement. He said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How did Jesus describe his life, his ministry? The disciples of John the Baptist came to him. And John said, go find him and see if he's asked him, are you the one that I've been prophesying about? Are you the one that I've been declaring is coming to the earth? And Jesus, how did Jesus prove to John the Baptist that yes, indeed, he was the one? What was it in Jesus' life, what characteristics were in his life and ministry that to him, when, he was, uh, when that question was given to him, what was the answer for that question? And he said this. He said, go tell him that you've seen the sick are healed, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. What was it? It's those things. What that was what uh, Jesus saw. That's what Jesus felt like was important. That's what proved to him, to John the Baptist, that he was the one. Amen. And I'm telling you something. He's in you. He's in me. He's in each one of us. I'm telling you something. There's been a change on the inside of us. Amen. Oh, that, that old man's passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put on the new. Amen. If I have a choice between the old stuff and the new stuff, you know where I'm going? I'm going for the new stuff. Amen. Amen. I'm going to put away that old man. That old man is dead and buried. We've already, like I said last week, we've already played taps. It's already done. It's already, he's already been done away with. There's a new person on the inside of you. On the inside of you. The new has come. Amen. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 says this. And have put on the new self. Put on the new self. Which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the creator. Listen to this. Col or Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. In him... We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. I'm so glad that he didn't say according to the poverty of his grace. I'm glad he didn't say according to the just get, getting by of this grace. I'm so glad that he said the riches of his grace. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for his grace. His grace is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 says this. 
by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. I'm so glad that Jesus set aside my past. I'm so glad that Jesus set aside sin. I'm so glad that Jesus felt like this thing needs to be set aside and nailed to the cross. Another translation or another scripture says it was blotted out. Thank God that it was blotted out. Amen. All my past, my past is past. Your past is past. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is good. God is good. Oh, he's faithful. Amen. He's faithful. You know, some of these things that we'll talk about this morning, you say, oh, I know this, I know this. But you know, there's a difference between knowing and knowing. Yeah. There's a difference between knowing and knowing. Uh, Jesus said they have ears, but they don't hear. So there's a difference between just knowing, because I can know it here and not know it down here. Yeah. Right, right. Amen. So some of these things, you know, sometimes I find myself responding to something like I don't know. I find myself responding like I haven't ever heard it. I find myself responding like that's not me, when really that is me. So, you know, when we, when we uh, know who we are in Christ, when we know that we are a new creature, we'll respond differently when the enemy comes up with thoughts about your past. When the enemy comes up with thoughts about family, maybe in your past. Or maybe family in your now. I don't know what the situation is. But the enemy will come with those thoughts, and he's a liar, and God is still on the throne. Amen. 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 That's one, that we, one thing that we kept saying all the time when we were uh, kind of stepping through all of this COVID stuff. And aren't you glad to be back? Yeah. Amen. And, you know, we're probably going to say that for the next six months. Because... <laughs> Uh, I'm just glad. I was just thinking about that earlier, earlier when, it, when Rhonda was praying and the lights, uh, these other lights were down and I couldn't see people's faces. All I could see was shadows. And I'm looking out there. I'm like, I am so glad we're all back together. I'm so glad I don't look out there and I just see this camera with the red light on the front. And I'm just focused on that. I'm so glad that we are back together. Amen. God is good. And, you know, we came, we, we come, we've come through that, and we're still coming through that, but we're coming through that thing in victory. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about this this morning. Who are you? I want to ask, who are you? You know, we need to know who we are. Yes. We need to know who we are. Yes. And number one, you are loved. Yes. Praise God. Oh, man. If people don't love me, if, you know, people, you know, family, they don't act like they love me or whatever, I know this one thing, he loves me. And I ever can't, I, I can't ever say that I'm not loved. I can't ever say that. That's, that's wrong. That's a lie because I am loved. And so Ephesians chapter five, verse two, turn with me there if you will. The King James says, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. Christ has loved us. How did he prove that he loved us, that he has given himself for us? Contemporary English version says this, Let love be your guide. Christ loved us and offered his life for us as a sacrifice that pleases God. Amen. Uh, we are loved. We are loved. You say, well, that's kind of simple. Pastor, couldn't you come up with something more, more, I don't know, theological or something? No, we are loved. Amen. We are loved. And how did he prove that he loves us? He gave himself for us. He gave himself for us. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he yelled from heaven, I love you! Is that what that scripture says? I'm looking at, wait a second, I have another, the New Living, maybe the New Living Translation says that, I don't know. But for God so loved the world that he gave 
His only begotten Son. God so loved the world that He gave the most precious thing that He had. He gave His Son. He loves us. Amen. For this is how God loved the world. This is how He loved the world. This is how God loved the world. Deborah, this is how God loved the world. That he gave his son. Mm, man, uh, somebody said that giving is the highest expression or the greatest expression of love. Man, this is how God showed his love. You know, he could have done that. He could have. He could have from heaven yelled and that and that would have been okay right he could have yelled and that would have been all right he could have expressed his love for us in any way we wouldn't have known the difference but this is how God expressed his love he would give us his son Amen. praise God hallelujah and so God's not looking at your past to see if he can love you he's not looking at your history to see if you're lovable no, he loves us anyway. Yeah. Amen. Thank God he loves us anyway. Amen. When that becomes real to us, we'll get happy about it. Yeah. He loves us anyway. Yeah. And you think about your past, and some people don't love them because of their past, but he loves us. Yeah. Amen. And he knows every detail about our lives. He cares about every detail in our lives. And you know what? He loves us anyway. Amen. The Bible says even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You know, um, God's love, His love, doesn't say, I love you, but I'm not sure if you love me. His love doesn't say that. His love says, I love you. And that's it. Amen. Thank God. You know, because if he was looking at us, he might see some things in our lives that, hmm, I don't know about that. Might. Sometimes there's things that I look at and I go, hmm, I don't know about that. But he doesn't look at me that way. He doesn't look at you that way. He sees us through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And because of that, when we receive the blood of Jesus, when we receive what he did, uh, number two, you are. Who are you? You're a child of God. Amen. I love this. You are no longer a slave, but a son. Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. You, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm no longer, uh, I'm no longer in servant mode. I'm no longer in slave mode, but I am a son. You know, there's a difference when you, even if you have somebody that, uh, we don't, but if you have somebody that comes and cleans your house, you know, they come in and clean their house, they have a different place than your child does. You know, my kids, my kids don't even ask whenever it's time to go to the fridge. They look in there and they say, why don't, why don't we have any milk? Why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? Why don't we have that? They don't, they don't say, oh, please give me something. They just go in there and they look and they go, uh, no milk? Uh, no. What, what do you expect? How do you expect me to uh, live when we don't have any milk? How do you expect me to make my cereal if we don't have any milk? As a matter of fact, we don't have any uh, Raisin Bran Crunch. Uh, can somebody go to the store? Hey, you need to go to the store to get Raisin Bran Crunch and you need to get milk. And you know what else? You need to get this. You need to get this. And you know what I do? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'll go right now. Well, you don't have to go right now. No, I'm going to go right now or else I won't remember and I'll get in trouble later. And so all of a sudden, uh, my kids, that's different than somebody else coming into the house because it's a different position. You know, we don't have that somebody else coming into the house position with God. We have the position of children. Yeah. Amen. Children Amen. of God. Thank God. 
He is so good to us. John chapter 1, verse 12 says this, But as many as receive him, how many have received him? Yeah. Come on now. Uh, to them gave he power to become sons of God. That sons is not, uh, goes for daughters and, you know, you understand. Anyway, sons of God, even them that believe in his name. Praise God. God is so good and so faithful. So listen to this. Who are we? Man, I'll tell you what. I can walk out of this place this morning know this, knowing this. God loves me. Amen. God's not mad at me. Oh, he's not ticked off. He's not even disappointed in me. Oh, God's not even disappointed in me. He doesn't look down at you and go, hmm, I'm so glad. I don't get a big sigh whenever I go to, go to the Lord. Oh, it's you again. It's you again. That is not God. That is not his character. That is not his, uh, his motive. He's not sitting there judging you according to your past. He's judging us according to his son. Judging us according to the blood of Jesus. Judging us according. And it's, uh, I heard somebody say this, that Christian stuff is too good to be true. Yes, it is. But we receive him anyway. Because he is that good. Amen. He is that faithful. Yes. And he loves us that much. He loves us that much. Somebody say, he loves me. He loves so we're loved. And we're his kids. Amen. Amen. He's our father. He's our God. I want to talk to you about, uh, just for a couple minutes here, about our kids. Listen to the scripture in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. It says this, For I will pour out water to quench your thirst, to irrigate your parts, irrigate your parts fields, and I will pour out of my spirit upon your descendants and my blessing on your children. Praise God. You know what? God's blessing is upon your kids. Amen. Is upon your kids. The blessing of the Lord is upon your kids. I mean, you're children of the Most High God. And He said that your blessing, His blessing his blessing would be upon your kids. So know this, that no matter what comes their way, God, the creator of heaven and of earth, his blessing is upon your kids. I'm expecting that blessing on my kids. I'm expecting that blessing on my kids. I'm expecting that. When we pray over our kids, uh, well, Addie's graduated. But anyway, when we pray the protection of God over our kids, we say, we thank you, Father, that you lead and guide them. They have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. And the, and the angels of the Lord go before, behind, and beside them. Everywhere that they go, they're in the right place at the right time. And I thank you, Lord, that you protect them, that the blood of Jesus protects them. That, that they are protected. It doesn't matter. A thousand may fall at their side, 10,000 at their right hand, but it shall not come near them. Yes. Amen. 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 And have an expectancy of God's protection over your kids. Yes. Have an expectation of God's blessing over your kids. Amen. Amen. You know, I've heard of some people, I've never, never seen it, and I hopefully don't know anybody this way, but man, they'd be like, oh, you're dumb. You're, you're stupid. You're, they say all that kind of stuff about their kids and expect them to be successful. No, the blessing of the Lord. Those kids are a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read this. Oh, come on now. Getting stirred up. You know, you second service people, you're quiet, but praise God. You get me stirred up. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 says this. And all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. That word peace, another translation, the contemporary English says, I will teach your children and make them successful. The Berean translation says this, Then all your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their prosperity. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. God is teaching your kids. Raise them up. You know, if you raise them in the nurture and the admonition of God, uh, they will stay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Expect your children to be blessed. Expect your children to be protected. Yes. Doesn't matter what goes on around. Expect your children. You know what? You're going to be protected because our eyes are on the Lord. Right. Our eyes are on the Lord. And you're protected. And, you know, uh, last night Addie went to, where'd she go? Bourbon A or somewhere up in there. Anyway, it's a long ways away. And you know who was watching our little app on the phone? And who was watching? Me. I'm watching the phone. And when she came back home, and all the way home, I'm watching her. I'm watching. Oh, she's, I told Ron, she's getting ready to turn on this. She's turning off Highway 24 onto this. And she's, in a couple miles she'll be on. And I'm watching her go through. And I watched all the way home. It was ridiculous. You know what? You know who's watching her? And you know who's watching our kids? God's watching our kids. Amen. And he's protecting our kids. Not everybody believes that. But I'm telling you this morning that you have, as a child of the Most High God, you have a right to that protection over your kids, over your family. Amen. We're like, man, every building that we go in is protected. Every building that we go in. I think about it. I'm like, okay, that school over there is protected because my kids are in that school. That's right. Amen. They're not the only born-again people in that school. There's other people. Your kid, their kids are in the school. But I'll tell you something. There's something about that. And it's not just something to be preached. It's something to be walked out. Amen. And it's not just for preachers. It's not just for people on television. No, it's for the believers. Amen. 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 Praise God. Man, you're loved, you're powerful. Greater is he that's on the inside of you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. You know, we can go out of this place knowing this, that my kids are going to be taken care of today. Praise God. My kids are protected. I'm not worrying about them. Uh, my kids are protected. I'm a child of God. Man, I'm in the family of God. You're in the family. I'm in the family of God. Right? I'm in the family of God. <clears throat> I'm not on the outside looking in. I'm on the inside. And I'm walking in the privileges. I'm walking in the privileges. And you know what? It's all because I'm loved. It's all because I'm loved. Don't talk bad about yourself. You're God's creation. You are God's creation. Man, he loves us. He loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is true today. And thank you, Lord, that we walk in your love. That we walk in your grace. Lord, we walk not as, as servants. We do serve you. But we don't walk as servants. We're children. And we serve you because we love you and because you love us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that our kids are protected. Uh, somebody in here, or maybe somebody out on Facebook, there's been fear uh, concerning your kids, maybe sending them to school or whatever. But I just want to encourage you. Don't fear. Don't fear. Just trust. Don't fear. Remember when Jesus was, <clears throat> I'm going to close here in just a second, but you remember when, when Jesus was uh, going to Jair, Jairus' house, Jairus' house. 
And he stopped because the woman with the issue of blood came up and got healed. She touched the hem of his garment, got healed. And about the time he was finished with the woman, uh, and she was telling the testimony of what had happened. A uh, servant of Jairus came up and said, your daughter is, is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. I mean, it looked like there was no way, no, no hope for the situation. And uh, the Amplified Version says that Jesus overheard it, overheard what the servant said, and he immediately turned to Jairus and said, don't be afraid, only believe. And you know that that girl was healed. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Say this. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. I trust in the Lord. He is faithful. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. I thank you for ministering to every heart, every life this morning. Thank you for the anointing of God, the grace of God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed and eyes closed, if there's anyone here in this room or, or maybe out in, uh, uh, on the Facebook, you're watching Facebook Live, if there's anyone here that would say, I need to make things right with Jesus, I want to say this, that today is your day. Today is your day. God is so good and he loves you so much. And if you all will, let's pray. Say this, say, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for me and you went to hell for me. You took my place and I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe I'm born again right now in Jesus' name. You know, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you were born again. And uh, your best days are ahead of you. Amen. Amen. We want to hear about it. We want to hear about it. Send us a text. Amen. If you're in this room and you prayed that prayer, Come up, altar care team, if you go ahead and come on up this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Come on up. And if, if you prayed that prayer and tell them, share with them the decision that you made this morning. Amen. And if you need uh, prayer for anything else in your life, we want to encourage you to come up and receive prayer. You know, it's great to have faith friends. Faith friends that will just hook up with you and believe God with you. And, you know, they may not understand everything, but they, they know enough to believe God with you. Amen. And that's what, that's what our prayer team is. And so, praise God for that. You know, we're doing offering a little bit different, differently now. And uh, we've made some changes. And so, if you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up in the air. The ushers will get that to you. If you need an offering envelope, amen. <clears throat> and so what we are going to do at the end of the service, we'll pray over the offering, we'll close out the service. And then at the very back of the room there on the wall is a offering box. I don't know what else to call it, I guess. It's, it's a box. And um, it says offering on it. And so there's one at the back, back of the room and there's one over by the coffee shop uh, by the hallway there. And so you can just drop that in there. But God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray over this offering. We're going to close in prayer. And it uh, hasn't been good to be in the house of God today. Amen. Amen. Uh, I told this to the early service, but to all the fathers, happy Father's Day. I didn't tell you happy Father's Day. And actually, they were joking with me because I said congratulations to the fathers. And they were like, congratulations. And so anyway, congratulations, fathers. Amen. Oh, where are they here? Yeah. 
Oh, there they are. There he is. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I don't have my microphone, but for those that don't know, David and Margaret got married yesterday. And so we want to say congratulations. <laughs> wave your hand. Wave your hand. There they are. So they had a private ceremony here, and um, Trent did the ceremony. It was beautiful. And so we just want to wish you guys a congratulations. Yes. I love surprises like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good surprise, right? And so congratulations to you two. And uh, it was exciting. It was really cool. But anyway, well, we love you. And uh, we're going to pray over this offering, and we'll close the service. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give this morning, to sow into the kingdom of God. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings of the tithers. We thank you, Lord, uh, as people give and sow in their tithes and offerings to you. I thank you that you return it back unto them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, we thank you for that. And Lord, we just declare that each individual in this room is blessed. We pray over our kids in the other room, and we thank you, Lord, that they are blessed, they are protected, and that they are strengthened in Jesus' name. We give you thanks, and we thank you, Lord, that you are increasing us more and more, us and our children, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.